So these are my African guineas, and I'm going to do a thorough video about them and what they're like to have as birds. Guineas are very charming birds, but they're also very, very noisy. They're also quite feral in behavior. I have been working with these guys every day since they were chicks to get them used to being handled. In general though, guineas do not like to be handled at all. And catching them will be very noisy. So if you want guineas that are this tame, work with them every day. And these guys aren't ever going to be like chickens. But you can get pretty close. In countries such as France, guinea is actually a delicacy to eat. But in America, we don't often do this. We prefer our guineas to be yard security and tick control. Ideally, you're going to actually want to free-range your guineas. However, there are some downsides to this as well. For guineas to be efficient as tick control and snake control, you want them to be roaming around. The downside to this is, though, is they will not roost in a house with the chickens. They'll actually eventually realize that. It's better to roost on the highest treetops. Because of this, they can become prone to predation from owls and raccoons. If you do want to keep your guineas in a pen, you're going to have to completely cover the pen. Guineas are seasonal layers. They lay from spring to summer. So they're not as proficient as a chicken. But you can eat their eggs. Their eggshells are a little tougher, but they can be eaten. People do like to eat their eggs. If you're free-ranging them, however, you're going to have to search for the eggs. They make their own nests out in the woods. And if you're wanting to breed guineas, I suggest to keep them in pens. Mothers will brood their own eggs, however, they tend to have a high mortality rate with their chicks when they're raising them by themselves. A guinea can hatch 20 chicks, but usually only about two or three will make it to adulthood. So if you want better odds, incubate and brood the chicks yourself. As I said earlier, guineas are very noisy, and that's what makes them good for security alarm. However, that being said, if you have close neighbors, they're not going to appreciate you having guineas at all. The interesting thing is, though, you can actually sex guineas by their call. Only the female can make a call that sounds like buckwheat, buckwheat.
And right now nobody wants to make the call, but I hear buckwheat out of this pen every day. <laughs> the male cannot go buckwheat. You can also sex them by the size of their waddles. These guys are still young, but that guy right there is a male. Tiny waddles usually means female. You can keep guineas with chickens, however, sometimes there is a downfall to this. Sometimes guineas love to be bullies, and they will uh, chase your chickens away from the feeder. But some people have luck with this. Some people run chickens and guineas together very well. I personally have amazing luck running guineas with turkeys. Turkeys and guineas get along wonderfully. Guineas come in several amazing colors. This is a lavender. That has the spotting or pearling as it's called. This is a sky blue. They don't have any pearling. That one's a pied. Over here. She has a white chest and white wings. This guy here is a buff dundot. They have some pearling, but it doesn't seem to be everywhere, or it's very faint. They also have very faint buff coloration. Guineas can also come in solid white. The traditional color is gray pearl. Which is the wild type color that you'll find on any guinea that's in the wild. But right now... I only have a limited amount of colors to show you. If you're wanting to breed guineas by color, I suggest making individual pens for that color. They're great alarms, good tick control, but they're a little more wily than a chicken. Come on guys. <laughs>